Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope lunch was good. Uh, it's a very good time to digest. Meanwhile, we'll be speaking about what the stack. And we're going to be starting by introducing who we are. So first of all, we both, you don't know our name yet, work for Innovance, uh, a small f company that started in 2008 in France that is uh, spreading like a, a virus, some would say, or like a successful company, like I would say. Um, we've been opening uh, an office in Montreal, Bangalore, and very soon in San Francisco. Um, we have 120 employees. We have lots of customers. We are making a little bit of money that's helpful to pay the employees. And uh, we have been constantly in the top 10 contributor list for OpenStack for the past four releases. So today with me, there is Christian Schwed. Christian. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Yeah, my name is Christian Schwede. I'm a developer working at Innovance. I've been working on OpenStack since the end of 2012, and last year, in October 2013, I joined Innovance. I just recently became Swift core developer, so I'm mostly focusing on Swift. But I'm also doing a lot of testing and automation stuff in and outside of OpenStack. And if you want to contact me, write me an email, or you also find me on IRC and sometimes on Twitter. And I'm Nick Barset. I am VP of products and pre-sales at Innovance. I've been working on OpenStack since uh, OpenStack had a name. Um, I founded the OpenStack telemetry uh, project a, a while back with uh, a few other people. Um, I've been traveling around the world, helping people deploy OpenStack in various fashions. And um, if you want to complain about my poor French accent or anything else during this presentation, I invite you to use my Twitter account, at Nijaba. <laughs> so, a little while ago, I had a conversation with my, my customer that told me, hey, what you guys are doing is great, but had, how do I know we are done? How can I tell whether the deployment you've delivered to me is actually doing what it is supposed to be doing? How are we going to be able to verify that we haven't forgotten something? There is so many pieces in OpenStack. This is a very complex thing. I need a progress bar. That was literally his, uh, his word. I need some way to measure how far we are into the deployment. And uh, of course, I immediately jumped to the whiteboard and wrote his progress bar. Look, we are at 80% of the project. But he didn't trust me, so we had to figure out something else. That's when I started talking with uh, Christian about, hey, you think there's something we could do with Tempest to verify uh, on a regular basis that everything is going well? But Tempest had this trouble. You need to be an experienced admin in order to run it. And you even need, in order to run some of the tests, quite a bunch, actually, admin rights on the cloud. And Tempest leaves resources a little bit everywhere after running. So we couldn't really use Tempest directly. So the idea of a, making a web app came to mind. And Christian, by the time we had the idea of a web app, Christian had already developed a proof of concept. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when I saw the web app, I say, hey, this is way too cool. We shouldn't keep that for ourselves. Why don't we actually make a website so that other people can use it? I'm sure other people will find it useful to be able to measure from an external resource how the cloud they're going to be using behaves. Is it compliant with Tempest? Does it expose the services correctly? Provide them with a clear outlook of what they were going to be dealing with. Oh. So why do you want to do that? Well, first of all, you want to make sure that functionally your cloud works correctly. That means looking into 
as many API calls, verifying that those API calls are working. And by doing so, you'll suddenly detect whether you've forgotten to configure Cinder, because you can have a very well-functioning Nova with a very poorly working Cinder. Or you can have a very well-working Glance without any Nova to deploy it to. Well, that's a little bit hard to miss, but you, you see the picture. And also, you can know, if your goal is to deploy all of OpenSAC, that you're done once all of the Tempest report passes. Well, that's in uh, an ideal world. Of course, the, cover the, the coverage of uh, Tempest is not 100%. We all know that. But we've been slowly working at improving that jointly at the community. Um, another thing that came to mind is, hmm, lots of people are very excited about the idea of doing hybrid deployment. I want to move my workload from cloud A to cloud B. How am I going to make sure this is possible? Because even though A and B uses OpenStack, well, we all know that all OpenStack may not be exactly the same. So taking the point of view of an external user of the cloud seem to be the best approach to solve this user of the cloud question. One may or may not trust a vendor to report on this feature directly. A vendor may care more about what's happening underneath than what's happening in front. The user experience is what we will be focusing on, giving non-developer, non-admin the possibility to verify what's going on. And of course, if the person that is executing the test is independent, that also uh, gives a little bit more credibility. Of, ev eventually, you may even want to be able to share the, the result of the test you've uh, uh, asked to be executed. And this is also a feature that uh, we built in. So on this, because I, I was only the product owner on, on this great adventure, I'll let Christian walk you through the exact process, the architecture uh, of what the stack. OK, thanks, Nick. So let's talk a little bit about using Tempest for testing. There are some challenges if you want to use Tempest for testing. Uh, Nick already said it. Maybe you want to test uh, your deployment as a non-administrator only with uh, user permissions. And in that case, you might not be allowed to upload any in images. So for example, your Cyrus image, image is missing. And this is a little bit problematic, because normally you use a Cyrus image, with a, which is a very small image, to test, for example, Nova. So what should we do now? Well, we decided to select simply the smallest available image. And in many ways, it's, well, most likely it's a Debian image, because Debian is the second next smallest image. There are also some problems with API changes within the, between different OpenStack releases. So for example, there was a change in a transaction ID of some logging inside Swift a while ago. And this transaction ID is now different than before. So all the Tempest tests for Swift were failing. But Swift itself ran fine without any problems. It was just this log line entry that made some problems. Actually, there is a discussion within the Tempest community, and there is a session also right after this about branchless Tempest. So the problem was that Tempest has a, had a branch which was tied to another branch, for example, to Nova. So with, temp, with branchless Tempest, I think we are going to solve a lot of these issues. And there might be some customized backends. Your backend might look like a Keystone backend, but it's not a real Keystone backend. Or you might have some, for example, a SSL termination in front of Keystone, removing some headers or adding some other headers, and your test might fail because of this. So we had to think about that. I already, I already said it. Your image servers might make problems. So maybe it's announced as public, and um, if you do a Keystone discovery, 
You see the image service, but you're not able to access it. Then the next step is you need to select some tests. So we were focusing first on user executable tests that gives you the chance as a non-administrator to run tests. And this is especially useful if you're a developer and want to try a different cloud and a different vendor and see if this vendor supports all the things that you need. We are also skipping some tests. So there are a lot of tests that are executed as JSON and as an XML test, but in the, well, behind the scenes, they're doing the same. And we are skipping negative tests for now. So we are focusing on the core functionalities. And what does it mean? For example, for Keystone, we need some authentication. This is obvious, I think. For Nova, it maybe means that uh, you want to create and boot a server, assign floating IPs to it, or they're using different flavors. And for Swift, it might mean that you want to create a container, upload some objects, download some objects, and similar things. Or in Glance, that you are able to select different images that are available to you. So for this, we first started with a command line interface. And we called it Tempest Report. And Tempest Report simply executes a keystone discovery with your credentials, selects the smallest available Nova image, the smallest available Nova flavor, and a network ID, and creates a, well, a simple Tempest configuration file. And after that, it executes a subset, of the a subset of the API tests within Tempest itself. And because the results might be a little bit overwhelming to you, we try to summarize these so that you don't only have well, all these log lines, but that you have a summary by a service, what was successful and what not. So Tempest Report is part of Tempest? No, Tempest Report is not part of Tempest yet. Um, there were some discussions in the community with it, and I think um, it's going to be very interesting in the next few months because uh, there are different ways how to do this and what people want to do with Tempest. And well, it's going to be interesting. It's um, available on our GitHub account, so it's open to the public. And if you can help out in the community, well, we're open to it. So, okay. so by the way, I'm asking questions, but you can ask questions <laughs> at any time. Feel free to get up and go behind this microphone. And if you ask good question, I'll give you candy. <laughs> <laughs> so as I said, we have a part that is discovering your settings. And it's included in Tempest report. So if you run it, for example, on a DevStack installation, you simply um, set your Keystone credentials to the environment. There's a small file within DevStack called OpenRC that, sets, that does exactly this. And you simply run Tempest Discover afterwards. So that creates a Tempest configuration file. And now you can set some other environment variables um, to tell Tempest, OK, we want to use that configuration file. And if you have done this, you can use your favorite tester. You can use nose test or tester or whatever else you want to use and simply call the Tempest test itself. And in that case, I just use a well, test for Swift. And as you can see, it succeeded. OK, it's only an example, but you get it, I think. So Tempest report uses this discovery of the Tempest configuration file. And gives afterwards, after you run all these tests, you have or you get a nice summary about the failed tests first, then the successful tests, and finally a summary grouped by each of the services that you tested. Um, because the slide is a li little bit limited, I simply selected Swift for this case and for this slide. Um, but I think where well, you have, for example, then object stored Swift and Nova and similar things. What we also try to do, but this is more like an educated guess that we are doing, is to detect the version you're running. So let's take Swift as an example because I'm most familiar with it. We have some services and some middlewares that might be introduced in Grizzly or in Havana or now in Icehouse. So, and if we see a test that passed, for example, a middleware that was introduced in Grizzly, then we can assume that we have at least a Grizzly release here and later on. And well, it's an educated guess, but it might be useful for some of you. And yeah, I think it's a nice way. 
Um, Swift itself got lately an addition called slash info that exposes a lot of your Swift environment, uh, Swift deployment information. And I think there are some discussions uh, within other projects to do, to do the same. So that would be a nice way to get a well, better estimation of what is running. So the command line interface was only a first step for us, but it's not for everyone. Um, as Nick already said, we, you might be someone, a manager, who wants to, de to verify your deployment and you're not familiar with the command line at all. So what are we doing now? We created a simple web application. And we're doing the same with the app web application now. We, you enter your Keystone credentials, just click on Start Test, wait until all these tests are finished, and at the end you can, use, uh, you can view the summary uh, of these tests. And then Nick came to me and said, well, let's open it to the public. It doesn't make sense to keep it for ourselves. And that became What's the Stack. So what is What's the Stack? What's the Stack is basically uh, Tempest as a service. Let's call it like this. So, and now we have another acronym, AAS acronym. It's a website that runs Tempest Report and Tempest in the background. So it's open to the pub public since a few days, and you can just create an account for your own and um, enter some of your information about your deployments and start using these and execute tests on it. So how does it look like? We have a configuration editor where you just put your username and your password and your keystone URL into it. In many cases, you have only a single tenant within your, for your username, so we simply select that tenant but in case you have more than one tenant and want to use a different one, you can also specify the tenant that you want to use for these tests. And after you save this configuration, you can start a new test. And hopefully, well, if you use a dev stack, you should see something like that, where all the tests passed. Well, this is no surprise. We're doing this, or the people from the QA are doing this, well, a thousand times or even more every day on the gate. But this is happening on your deployment now. As you can see, the tests are summarized and grouped by services. And you can have a look at the detail for each of these services. So let's take Swift again. And we have some basic services running here, basic tests, for example, object and container actions. And we have some middlewares that are tested. Quota support for containers, versioning, or static web. But unfortunately, not every time you see all only green lights. You will some red, see some red lights, probably. So in this case, we also have a Swift installation, but now only the basic tests have passed and we are uh, verified successfully. There is a second tab that shows a small red fall with the errors. And if you look into the errors, you see that these tests failed on your deployment. So you now might want to be into, you might be interested uh, why these tests failed. So in the background, because we're running Tempest, we have all the log logging information from Tempest itself that we store for you, and you can just simply create, click on test logs and see what happens there. That might be not for everyone. So it's more focused. This one is more focused to the developer or administrator, um, but it's very useful because, for example, if you're a manager and we go one step behind. We have some links here on the upper right. Share a public link or download and export it as a PDF. So if you run these tests, you can make it, well, let's call it semi-public because it's only known or only accessible if you know the link. But you have a link that you can share with well, some of your developers or operators or admins. And these admins can then have a look, oh, what happened there within the Tempest tests? And of course, you can also download this as a PDF. So behind, oh, sorry, we have yeah, a question. Um, I noticed that you added some text uh, right the, the page before, where it seemed that, where, where does the, the, the title of this test are coming from? Oh, the title of the test. Well, we added some titles for the test on our own. So um, because our idea was, if you have something like Tempest API object test, test container static, what does it mean? 
Nobody knows, well, of course the operators and developers know this, but um, if you're someone else, you might not know about this. So we try to add some useful title for these tests or test classes um, that people that are not really aware of what is happening behind the scenes can get an, well, an idea what happened there and what is tested there. That's the idea behind this. So you might wonder, why should I give you my credentials for my deployment? And well, we, it's a good question. We try to secure this a little bit. Um, I think you're all aware of the security breaches that are happening to even the biggest services around with database dumps going around the world and uh, broken um, passwords, uh, credentials, and things like that. And of course, we don't want to have this negative press for, for us. So behind the scenes, we have a web server with the web application itself. Uh, it's a Django application. Of course, we have a database where we want to store all the configurations and of course also the um, results from the tests. We have a message queue. So each time you click on start test, uh, we send a message into the queue. And finally, we have some worker nodes. And the worker nodes are running Tempest and execute these tests. So we try to separate it. Of course, one thing is to um, distribute the load over more than one worker node. And we don't want to have a crashing site because there are 100 people who want to test at the same time. But also for security reasons. So what we are doing is, if you submit your password, we use a public key on the web server, encrypt that password, and store it in the database. And the private key part of this key is only available on the worker. And the worker is not accessible from the outside, so there's no SSH running or HTTP web server, whatever else. It's just behind our firewall, and it's just, well, going to the outside, but not coming from the outside back in. So what is happening here then is that the worker decrypts your password and creates a configuration file for Tempest and executes a Tempest test. And finally, we store the results in the database. And because it might happen that for some logging reasons, Tempest stores also your authentication token or your password inside the logs, there might be some lines. We remove these lines. So there no, should be no security credentials in the log file at all. Well, and if you're really paranoid, uh, I would recommend that you change your password after the test is run. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea. And because we were focusing only uh, our first step for, on, on user tests that are not executable as admin, um, if you're just using a regular user, you should be, well, I think it's a good idea to start like this. If you want to run these tests, please make sure that um, you have a quota that supports testing. So what I've seen lately is that people trying to test their deployments, they have, well, let's say they have a limit of 10 compute instances. They already have 10, 10 instances running. And you see a lot of failures, of course, because Tempest is not able to start a new instance. So what are we going to do next, Nick? Well, that's really a good question. I think, uh, first of all, we want to see if that's useful for anyone. I mean, it's useful for a customer. But if we start maintaining it uh, as a public tool, as we decided to do, there is no point if nobody uses it. So we are going to be monitoring the usage uh, from now, because we opened the, the website today, correct? Yes. Um, and if there is some update, well, we'll keep on maintaining it. And if there are people uh, proposing new features uh, in, uh, the, on Git, we'll be happy to merge them if they make sense. Uh, and if there is a lot of update, then uh, I think it could be a good idea. They become uh, a, a little small project on Stackforge. Um, but really, uh, we want first to see what's the use you could make of it. And um, yeah, uh, there is also the dev core rest stack effort. Maybe what we've done could be useful to, to that. I mean, we don't want to pretend that we have revolutionized the world. We're just making a useful, something we can make useful 
available, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, I had one, another question. Um, yeah, of course. Running the test, does it cost money? Well, it depends. <laughs> so um, if you're using a public cloud offering and you have your, put somewhere your credit card data into it, it will probably cost you something. Because we're running the test, we're starting instances, uh, we are creating objects in Swift, for example. So it will consume some resources. And it's just like if you start, a, for example, a Nova instance on your own. It will also cost you something. And um, we try to, to ensure that the created instances are stopped after the te these tests. But still, it's an ongoing effort for us and also for the Tempest community. Just have a look afterwards. Is there no instance still running? Would be a good idea for you. So we don't bill anything for this. So this is operated by Innovance. And um, we don't charge you for anything. Yeah. Can you use the microphone in the middle? And you'll get candy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding. I, I brought them. <laughs> You're not forced to meet them. Yeah. Have you, have you uh, pointed at any of the public clouds and see whether it works with them? Yes. Thinking of Rackspace and HP? Yes. yes. I won't say which one, but <laughs> we, we've done it for some public clouds. And uh, that was one of the reasons we tried to modify a little bit of the code and um, have some small patches uh, on our side. Because we just saw what, what I was talking earlier on that, for example, you're not able to upload an image, or there is some customized authentication backend, um, which is normally failing. So, yeah, um, we run it against them, and uh, I would say a good amount of tests passed for them. But some of the features are not available maybe yet to everyone or on every open cloud. So, yeah, but we tested that. And there are some things that you need to take into account. For example, there is a, there is a vendor that has a tenant name that is made of a single empty space, I think. So, yeah. So, yeah, if you want to test on your own, just register yourself on our website. There's another question, I think. Um, any chance you, you make available an offline version that can be installed on premises and used to test the private deployments? I so think we, we could recommend to use Tempest Report, the, the command line, for now. For now, we could recommend that one, yes. Because setting up a Django plus uh, a worker just to do one test may take a lot longer than just using Tempest Report. What did you yeah, think? that might be one reason. There's also a project uh, effort in the community to, to something, well, it's a little bit different, but uh, it's called a teacup, I think. And um, it's a different approach than, than our approach. But yeah, we could think about this also, making a container, something maybe, like maybe a container. We, yeah, a, contain, a Docker container. Yeah, that could be a Docker container hyped, would be nice. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would be cool. Uh, how did you say that you handle different versions of OpenStack? Is the point more to follow Trunk or go for different tests? Yeah, so for now, we try to use the latest Tempest release. And yeah, because you have some API changes or whatever else between uh, recent uh, OpenStack uh, releases. We try to patch these locally uh, on the environment to avoid failing tests because just, well, a log line changed or something like that. Um, but for the future, there's the branchless Tempest effort. So Tempest is getting branchless. And there's, well, there's this talk right after this on this level, I think 301. So that you're able to use Tempest with at least the latest stable releases of OpenStack. So if you have a OpenStack Havana release, for example, then you might be still able to use a recent Tempest uh, version just for testing. What about um, different store solutions like Ceph instead of Swift? Uh, we didn't test Ceph yet. And I need to think about it a moment. I'm not sure if Ceph is yet included into, in Tempest. No, it's not. But um, I guess in that case, we. Generally, people using Ceph uh, as the object store will 
use the compatibility layer uh, through the Rados gateway to uh, make it look like it is a Swift. So in theory, it should pass, but um, yeah, we must say that we haven't tested it. Yeah. No more questions? Yes. How, uh, oh, oh. Uh, how about uh, automatic uh, test job scheduling? Job scheduling? Yeah. If you want to, you want to test that? Uh, periodic uh, execution. Oh, so would you want to have the test oper in, operate yeah, in a recurring yeah. fashion? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that you can verify okay. that over time your... Uh, daily, daily test or uh, weekly test. Well, That's in fact, idea. we were thinking about that a while ago. Uh, the feature is at least not public yet. But uh, we were thinking about that. We need to uh, figure out how we want to do this, because this is, a, at the moment, a completely open service from us. So you don't need to you know, pay us for this service. Let's assume you have 1,000 users. Or, no, let's assume you have 100 users that want to test their deployments regularly. We are only just. Uh, well, serving these users, so we need to balance this a little bit. So what we are doing now is um, that we, in, in the case you start a new test, this test is queued, and the next free available worker will execute your tests. Of course, you're open to just uh, retest your deployment, well, a week later or a month later or something like that, but automated scheduled tests are not yet available, at least. Yeah. But of course, if you want to submit a patch, you're very welcome. <laughs> yeah. Do the user have ability to uh, choose the test cases, or they are predefined? No, not yet. Um, we try to, well, for the web interface, we try to simplify this a lot, and um, to focus only first uh, on the first step to, yeah, to make a simple web interface. Of course, if you're running Tempest Report, the command line interface, um, you're free to, to edit the, number, the, the list of existing tests and maybe just to test only well, Swift or Nova or what, what you want to test. Um, so there's no, well, you're just open to it. Christian, uh, have you seen who is going to ask the next question? I think we should run. Yeah, we, yeah, we should skip it. <laughs> <laughs> I am a colleague of those guys. But uh, that is a popular question. Did you, <laughs> did you think about having uh, an API? So, so you can have an API, so you can uh, specify that uh, you want to be able to test. So basically, you can, uh, you can automate those things. So whenever you did uh, some, uh, some, uh, some change in your cloud, you can uh, send an API call to here, so it can test. Well, we don't have an API yet. Uh, but, well, that comes to Tempest as a service then, I think. Yeah, Something like that. Software defined. <laughs> so you have a RESTful interface for it. It's a nice idea, I think. Um, we need to think about it, I think. It might be a good addition to our web service. Cool. So, Thank you. Yeah, thanks. What's the stack as? Sorry? What's the stack as a service? Yeah, what's the stack as a service, yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> How do you select which test to run? Well, the test we run, we were first focusing on, um, well, it's not the official, don't take me wrong, it's not the official core definition, but tests that we sort of are core for functionality. So to, to create servers, for example, and boot servers and stop them and assign different flavors. Um, so we selected a list of tests that can be run as a normal user and tried that out on our own deployments. And, um, but for the future, I think we, we have a close look at what is happening within the community, and especially in DEF Core, because there are a lot of people thinking about exactly this topic and which tests we need and uh, which tests should be run. So, well, for the moment, we selected the, them on our own, but I think we will closely follow the DEF Core. Definition we are. Of <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> we are already. I guess that's it. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah.